Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of CF Level 2. Today we'll be covering further portions of the first reading of derivatives that we had, specifically focusing on the forward rate agreements today. So if you remember at the start of the first session, I said that the entire reading of forward commitments has four major assets or the underlyings that we'll be focusing on. So you had equity and fixed income, which we've already covered in the first session. This session will be focused primarily on forward rate agreements, where the underlying itself is nothing but an interest rate prevailing in the market. So let's start with some introduction to what FRA is. Now, forward rate agreements is not a new kind of security as such, at least in terms of the basics, you did cover the meaning of what this contract is, how it works at level one. So let's first quickly do a recap of what we know from level one. So FRA is nothing but a contract, just like you had forward equity. Similarly, you have forward rate this time. So now what I am agreeing is, I am agreeing today to fix some interest rate that would be charged at a loan that I take in some point in the future. So effectively, the timeline looks something like this. <clears throat> time zero is when you are entering into the agreement let's say this is time one after one month so one represents one month here so after one month you will effectively take some sort of loan for which you will be taking a loan for let's say two more months so this becomes three months so this gap is two months so here effectively the idea is you are deciding at time zero some sort of interest rate that should be charged at time one for the loan you take for two months. Now if I just wait to take the loan after one month, I'll be exposed to the vulnerability of interest rates increasing or decreasing. It exposes me to interest rate risk. So what I do is I enter into a forward rate agreement where at time zero itself, I finalize the interest that would be charged when I take a loan after one month. So loan is to be taken after one month, but the interest is being fixed at time zero. So I'm eliminating any sort of variation in interest rate that can happen. So logically it works the same way as it did for forward equity or forward fixed income contracts where the intention was I want to buy some company share after one month, the price may increase or decrease to eliminate that vulnerability, that volatility, I'm fixing a price right now known as forward price. So now that we have a basic structure of FRA contract with us, this particular kind of contract is denoted by the notation one by three FRA. One representing the delay from current time to the time where the loan would be initiated and three representing the total duration of this timeline. Now, once you have this timeline with you and my suggestion would be for the initial questions do make the timeline because once you make the timeline the calculations are just time value of money so with this timeline out of the way just like we had with equity fixed income forwards here also there are two concerns first is price and then there is valuation now price of an fra simply means the interest rate that you want to be fixed. So I want to take a loan after one month, but I want the interest rate to be fixed right now. That fixed interest rate is what we call price of an FRA. And as such calculation of this fixed rate, this is not very drastically different from how we calculated the forward rates. If you remember in fixed income, in the first reading itself, we had calculations of forward rates. That is exact logic that we'll be following here to calculate the price. So you will be given the rate for one month. You will be given the rate for three months. You just have to calculate the rate that should be applicable for this two month period. That is how we calculate the price of FI. Don't worry, we'll do an example for all of these to have further clarity. Now, valuation of FRA is something slightly different. Normally, in case of any sort of forwards, at time zero, you fix some sort of price. And if between time zero and time one, you have any sort of changes in that price of the underlying, whatever gain or loss you have, that is the sort of profit or loss for long party. And that is what valuation is. Here also the idea is same. One thing you have to keep in mind is this one month, this represents the maturity of FRA. So effectively, while we make a timeline of three months, 
the actual FRA will only exist between 0 and 1. After this, the forward rate agreement will not exist. So valuation works on a very simple logic. It says that if there is any sort of change in the interest rate from time 0 to 1 month, we compare it to the rate that we fixed at time 0, the forward rate. And then whatever gain or loss you have, that is calculated. Now, if you think logically, the interest, if you take a loan of two months after one month, so over here, I'm taking a loan. If I want to repay the loan, I'll have to repay it at this point, at the end of those two months of loan period. So effectively, any interest that I would pay would happen at this point. But because my forward rate agreement matures at the end of the one month itself, for that reason, all the interest that we calculate here, we calculate interest on the basis of fixed rate at that three month point. We calculate interest on the basis of what the market rate is at that three month point. And then we discount those cash flows back to one month. And that is our valuation. Don't worry, it would seem complicated right now, but we'll do an example to understand it. So that's it for the basic part. Let's start with an example for pricing of forward rate agreement.